these are AirPods. Generation 2, they're small, powerful, and a truly deadly combination, making them one of the best wireless earbuds in the market. At the same time, these are also AirPods. Alright, it's time. Today, we check out the AirPods Max, which is Apple's most luxurious sound device. Let's get into it. Now this is the box the AirPods Max actually come in. When you open up the box, that's how you see the AirPods Max already packed up. You get this really nice premium feeling case. Other than that, you also get a little literature that you're probably never going to use. And unfortunately this year, Apple refused to give us any more Apple stickers, which according to me is the best part about getting any Apple product. But you also get a USB-C to lightning cable, which I've already removed to charge up these AirPods because they came practically dead from the store. Furthermore, there's no charging brick in the AirPods Max box and that's really sad because normally Apple would actually give you a charging brick with all their devices, but it looks like Apple started a new trend this year where they're giving you absolutely no charging bricks with any equipment. Furthermore, when you actually buy the AirPods Max, you also get this little covered paper protection for the ear cups, which you're pretty much gonna wanna throw out. Okay, so the first thing I wanna address with the AirPods Max is why these are actually in the market today. Honestly, this is for somebody who's already invested in the Apple ecosystem. If you're not a part of the Apple ecosystem, this will be a really great pair of headphones to buy. I'm not gonna deny that. But to be completely honest, its major features come connected to the ecosystem. Because the whole point of these headphones is to amplify the magic that you get with these little guys or the AirPods Pro as well, which are basically in-ear earplugs and amplify all of that and give it to you in a more comfortable premium over-the-ear package. Now honestly, when you actually unbox these headphones, I have to tell you, they feel fantastic in the hand. The build quality just feels amazing. They have a really, really good weight to it. Case is fantastic as well. It's got its coins and I know all of Twitter and all of the internet has exploded looking at the design in this case but that's not what we're talking about we're talking about the materials here and the finish is phenomenal it feels like a really good silicon case i actually thought it's going to be a leather case but it's not it also has some smart functions to it very few but it does we're going to jump into that in a little bit if you hold these in your hand it is going to feel like a 60,000 rupee device it is going to feel like 550 dollars and i have to admit the build quality is fantastic so as you can see i do have the space gray version of the airpods max space gray is one of my favorite colors for any apple product but this year apple did give you five different colors which i'm going to show you right over here which you can actually choose from if you want funkier looking colors for your headphones. These colors basically match the colors that they have on the iPad Air 4, which just came out this year. And I think it's fantastic that they're giving you so many color options. When you take them out of the case, you're gonna see that they have a really, really nice, minimal and retro look to them on the overall. I love the build quality. I love the look. I love the design. I love how minimal it is. And I actually really love that it has no logos anywhere whatsoever on it. I think that's really, really nice. I also love the fact that Apple's gone for a really nice retro look with these headphones because they do stand out, especially compared to anything else in the market because most headphones nowadays look exactly the same. Let's talk about this little guy on top, a mesh-based headband. And this is supposed to actually help with comfort. Overall, most headphones, like the Bose 700s that I actually had, had a normal headband on the top with a little bit of memory foam on them. Now that wasn't too bad, to be very honest, and Bose are extremely comfortable. But after a prolonged period of use, maybe two or three hours of use, you are gonna start feeling that headband on your head. That's exactly where this is supposed to come into play. Now, I have used it for the last hour or two, not too much, and I do like it. I haven't felt any discomfort while using it, and it is a lot softer than any other regular headband that you have on the market. But honestly, is it gonna be better after using it for two or three hours? I think that depends from person to person. It depends on the size of your head. It depends on whether you're comfortable with keeping headphones on your head for that long. Because if you're not, no matter how soft or how comfortable this mesh is, you're still gonna feel the headphones on your head. Let's talk about the ear cups. The ear cups do match the design and the entire aesthetic of the headphone, which is space gray. And I love the color schemes that they've actually come out with this year. They're all really nice, subtle colors. And I don't think you're gonna go wrong with any one of them. The ear cups are already made of memory foam and they're extremely huge, which basically means that when you're using these ear cups, they should be able to cover any ear size and any head. And on the overall, they should be pretty comfortable, which is something that I absolutely love. Here's another factor about the ear cups that you guys need to know is that these are magnetic. You can pull them off and put them back on. And I honestly think that's a great feature. Now, if you're gonna ask me why it's so important for ear cups to actually come off a premium pair of headphones, it's because when you buy a headphone, which is over $250, what you need to remember is that the drivers, the sound that's coming out of the headphones is coming from the drivers, which are actually inbuilt right here. And the distance between this driver and your ear is actually calculated when these headphones are being tuned and being manufactured as the right amount of distance between driver as well as your ears that actually gives you the premium listening experience that any pair of headphones in the market is expected to give you. Now with headphones such as Sony and Bose, which are the leading headphones in the market right now, you can replace the ear cups, but replacing them is quite a task. It's not as easy as just 
doing this. So I think that's a pretty great feature. This feature helps with the longevity of buying a premium pair of headphones because when you do buy a premium pair of headphones, you want them to last for at least two, three, maybe four years, maybe five. And most headphones in the market nowadays will last that long. The only thing that changes is the compression and the wear and tear in the ear cups. And when that changes, the distance between the driver in your headphone as well as your ear is going to change, which is going to change the entire listening experience. And in the past, a lot of people have had to actually go ahead and replace their headphones completely because of this glitch. Apple giving you this is fantastic. But wait, when Apple gives you a great feature, there's also a downside and the downside is the price. The price of these ear cups is $70 if I'm not wrong and in India I'm assuming it's going to be close to 10,000 bucks just to change these foam ear cups. Yeah, I know a lot of people are going to be ticked off about that but being brutally honest if you're somebody who's going to spend 60,000 rupees on a pair of headphones you have to be ready to spend 10,000 rupees on a pair of ear cups. Spending 10,000 on maintenance of your earphones once every year or two it is a choice that you have to make. Something else that you need to know about these headphones is that these headphones are extremely heavy. I think the most heavy part of the headphones is the aluminium ear cups. When you put them on your ear, you're actually going to feel the weight. It hasn't been a problem so far, but it's only been a couple of hours of testing. And if you're not okay with a heavy pair of headphones on your head for prolonged usage, you may have a problem. Let's talk about the adjustments that you can actually make to these headphones. Here, when you turn your ear cups around, you're going to see that there's a little hinge over here. You can actually pull on it. This is a retractable hinge and it's also known as a telescopic arm in Apple's fancy terms. Basically, it helps you adjust your headphones to any size of head. If you've used older headphones from Bose and Sony or Beats or any other brand out there in the market, you're going to see most of them come with a little click when you want to adjust the setting of your headband on your headphone and those clicks are predefined and you can't customize it any further. With these, they do have a certain amount of friction but you can actually adjust it to any level that you actually want to and I think that's pretty pretty great. Now talking about design, I want to come to the next part of this headphone, the buttons and the control layouts of these headphones which are found only on the right ear cup. You have two buttons on this pair of headphones. One, basically this little guy here which is the digital crown which is basically stolen from the Apple Watch. It's a more beefed up version of the crown that you actually have on the Apple Watch which is right here. Honestly, I don't mind it but what I do have a problem with is the placement of the digital crown because it's way on top and it's at the back and I often find myself fiddling around trying to figure out where it is. Now what I do love about it is that you can control your volume using the digital crown. It does click every time you rotate it and it keeps clicking as you increase or decrease the volume letting you know that something's actually happening when you're using it. I know a lot of people are going to appreciate that. The digital crown can also be used for different controls. You can single press it to play and pop. You can also double press it to skip to the next track and you can triple press it to actually go back to the previous track. If you long press the digital crown you're also going to be able to access Siri which is your on-the-go voice assistant. You have one more button which is on the front of the headphone which is right here. This button is basically for noise cancelling and transparency mode. Now you can basically adjust these settings even on your iPhone or on your Apple Watch when you're using your music features anyway. You can also pull down into your control center and actually access these things but the fact that you have a quick button for the two is fantastic. Furthermore on wearing this I have to say that the noise isolation on these headphones not the cancellation just the isolation is pretty great. Okay so before we actually go out and test any of the major features on the AirPods Max what I really want to do next is tell you about the specs so that we can get that out of the way. The AirPods Max basically come with eight microphones. You have two on the inside and six on the outside. What these basically help is with computational audio. What further boosts the computational audio is the adaptive EQ feature that's inbuilt into this as well as the H1 chip. Now if you don't know what the H1 chip is, the H1 chip is Apple Silicon which we all know is killing it in the market right now. Basically this is a 10 core audio chip and what it basically does is it understands the fit of your headphones on your head and it also understands the seal that the headphones are making on your head depending on the size of your ears and the shape of your head. If you're wearing any earrings, if you have long hair, it's going to understand all of that and it's going to fine tune the music depending on the genre of the music and it's also going to analyze the sound that's outside your headphones. It's going to actually tune the sound perfectly to give you the best listening experience. Now if you don't know what computational audio is and you're still confused about it, I'm going to give you a non-scientific reference for this. Look at your smartphone, pick up your phone, pull up your camera app and take a photograph. You're going to see that the kind of photograph that you get on your smartphone is a lot different to the kind of photograph that you get on a DSLR or a mirror. You're going to get an instant ready photo on your phone and that's a smart photograph that's computational photography what your phone is doing is it's using the silicon the processor and the GPU on the inside and analyzing the situation the seal taking multiple exposures pulling them together and creating a final finished product for you that's pretty much what the AirPods Max are doing except it's not with photography it's with audio and this is what you call computational audio furthermore having the H1 chip inside this also brings other benefits to the AirPods Max just like you have on the older AirPods which is basically auto connection with any iOS device almost instant pairing quick jumping connectivity between your devices. Basically, this is exactly why I said it's great if you're in the Apple ecosystem because they're extremely beneficial. Furthermore, by also using something known as accelerometers and gyroscopes, the AirPods Max, when you're using them with your iOS device such as your iPhone or your iPad, give you a special feature known as spatial audio. Spatial audio is fantastic. It's one of my favorite features. Now, the best part about spatial audio is that it's like a home theater system or a surround sound system inside your headphone. In simple words, if you're sitting in a room and you're surrounded by speakers all around and you're watching an action sequence where the 
the character in your movie is actually running and there's a lot of explosions and a lot of gunshots being fired in different directions, you're going to be able to feel those sounds coming from all different directions, giving you a more immersive feel. Also, as you turn your head towards the left or towards the right, you're actually going to be able to feel the audio and the sound shift. Now, bear in mind, this only works with movies and TV shows at the moment. So I did test it out with The Dark Knight by Christopher Nolan. I have used spatial audio on the AirPods Pro and I always said spatial audio on the AirPods Pro was more of a gimmick because the feel and the effect wasn't that strong. But when you have a pair of on-ear headphones giving you the exact same feeling, it's phenomenal. It truly feels like an immersive home theater experience on the go. Now, the final benefit of having the H1 chip inside of these headphones basically means that you get fantastic battery life. Now, you do have 20 hours of battery life on the AirPods Max and this is with noise cancellation on, which also means that when you switch off noise cancellation, which is possible through your control center on your iPhone, you should get a longer battery life. I have to admit there are other headphones in the market that do have a better battery life. I think the Sony's are slightly better on battery life and the Bose is around the same, 20 to 22 hours if I'm not wrong. But honestly, I've never really exhausted 20 to 22 hours at a stretch on any pair of headphones and I don't think you're going to either. So if you have over 10 hours on any pair of headphones with one charge, you're good to go. Speaking of battery life, these do come with a lightning connector. It's true, but extremely slow. I know that's a little bit of a downside for a lot of people out there. The next thing that you want to get into is the power button, which pretty much doesn't exist. The AirPods Max don't come with a power button on them. They have literally two buttons and there's no way to power them off. But there is an article that's been released by Apple where you put these down on a table, they automatically know they're not on your head anymore and within five minutes, they should go into low power mode. Furthermore, we have the little controversial case, which looks like a whole bunch of things. The moment you place your AirPods into this, it's going to take your AirPods into a completely low power mode, basically give you about a month before the battery completely depletes. That's what I read online, but I don't know how true this is because I've not had it for that long. But again, it's something you need to know when you're buying a pair of 60,000 rupee headphones. There is no power button. Okay, so it's officially time that we do an audio test with the AirPods Max. We're going to test out noise cancellation. We're going to test out transparency mode. They've already auto-corrected to my iPad, which is right in front of me right now. My iPhone, I'm going to play one of the tracks that I absolutely love. The song I'm listening to is Ganja. It's on Apple Music. You must have heard a bunch of his music on my channel in a lot of my videos because he's also a part of Epidemic Sound, which is the music royalty free service that I actually use for my YouTube videos. Let's test it out. The first test is going to be with noise cancellation on. Wow. Okay, wait. I officially cannot hear the air conditioning. I also can't hear what my voice sounds like right now. It's... It's insane. The sound separation is fantastic. You guys just heard that bass drop. I am playing the track for you. And honestly, it... I don't know how to explain it. It's not... Okay, wait, so the music just stopped because I put the headphones down so we know that feature works really well. And oh my God, that was insane. I could literally hear every instrument and the bass, honestly, the bass on this is insane. And the best part is it's not overpowering. Like I always found Sony's bass to be extremely overpowering. I like a more balanced kick for every track that I'm listening to. This is insane. Furthermore, the noise cancellation on this is phenomenal. I could literally not hear my voice right now. No idea what I sounded like. The AC is completely gone. The sound of the music literally pumped you have to listen to it for yourself to actually understand how good these really are. We're gonna test out transparency mode and I hope that actually lives up to the same expectation. AirPods connected. I have the same track here on. Okay, so we're now in transparency mode. I use the phone to change over transparency mode. I have the volume almost at 100% to see how loud these go and they're insanely loud, but I can hear my own voice. And I have to admit, I don't sound digital at all. The music is insanely loud, even though I can hear my own voice. It's like, it's like a mixture of the two. I'm gonna have to test this out without the headphones on. Okay, so I lift up the headphones. I can hear my voice. The music stopped. Music kicked back in and I can still hear my voice. Hold up. All right, now the music's off and I sound almost exactly the same. There might be a little bit of a difference, but that's because of the vacuum that's created because of the headphones, but oh man, they sound exactly the same. So the track that I was actually listening to has a good amount of instruments in it. It's got a really 
nice bass line to it. It's got a lot of natural sounds to it, really good synthesizers, and this is one of my favorite genres of music to listen to. That's exactly why we ran that test with that. But now what we're gonna do is something slightly different. As you guys know, my old drivers were these guys, which are the Bose 700 noise canceling headphones, which have been fantastic, they've been phenomenal. And I have to admit, even after having them for over a year, the ear cups are in a fantastic condition. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna play the exact same track on both these headphones and do a quick comparison on which is actually better. Now this is not a scientific test, I'm not an audiophile, but I am somebody who is extremely enthusiastic about music and I do have a really unhealthy relationship with music wherein I cannot live any day without actually listening to a substantial amount. So yet again, for this part of the video, I'm gonna be picking tracks from Epidemic Sound's website. They're not gonna be commercial sounds, but they're gonna be different genres and we're gonna actually run through a really good test on this. Okay, so the first track we're gonna be testing out is from the same artist that we were listening to before. His name is Oe. Okay, so the next test is basically gonna be with transparency mode on with the exact same track playing. Okay, we're now in transparency mode and like I said, it does sound a little more digital on this than it does on that, but I can still hear my voice and I don't mind it. Now, let's get into this. That was fantastic. I have no questions about how good Bose is. And even today, after a year of using these, if you have the Bose 700 noise cancelling headphones, you're not going to be disappointed. Now we're gonna test out the exact same song with the AirPods Max because I actually haven't heard this track on it. Let's get into it. We do have noise cancellation in a full right now and it's insanely powerful. I can't hear my voice. That was something else altogether. All right, wait, before I give anything off, let's check out the exact same track with transparency mode on and see how good it is. And the music instantly started playing, I didn't even have to hit play. I can hear my voice now and it's, it's insane. I have to admit, this was completely crazy. Okay, so the next track that we're listening to with noise cancellation on on the Bose is a rock and roll track which I have on Epidemic Sound. We're now in transparency mode. The sound quality doesn't change whatsoever. And that's really great for any pair of headphones out there. All right, I think I've heard it now. Yeah, when it comes to rock and roll, it's gonna be really, really hard for any pair of headphones on the market to compete with Bose as far as I'm concerned. Let's see what the AirPods Max actually do. All right, instantly connected, we're on, and let's do this. Transparency mode, and even here the sound quality does not change at all. Other than the fact that you can hear your voice on both the headphones, nothing changes when you switch to transparency mode, and that's great. 
Okay, honestly speaking, I think both of them did a fantastic job when it comes to rock and roll as well as deep chill electronic. Bose has fantastic instrument separation yet again. The bass is not that heavy on the Bose, but the clarity, the clarity was out of the world. I think Bose is still the most clear sounding consumer based sound equipment that you can actually find on the market. And other than that, I think with noise cancellation and transparency, Bose does a pretty great job. With respect to the AirPods Max, honestly, everything else is pretty much the same. The highs, the lows, the mids are tuned really well. Of course, they have a different kind of tuning. This is more on clarity and this has a little bit more punch to it. But where this actually stands out for me is the fact that it has a little wider sound state. That's the only actual difference that I can actually hear when I'm comparing the Bose to the AirPods Max. To be completely honest, the Bose is like, you feel the sound is pumping in from here. The, the balance is really great. But the AirPods Max are just a little bit louder and it actually feels like the sound is coming from all over. It's really wide sound. And I don't know how to explain it in a scientific way, but that's the best way for me to actually describe it for you guys. Both of these headphones are fantastic in their own right. I think the Bose is really, really natural, really, really simple. And I think they have great noise cancelling. Honestly, it's really hard to differentiate the noise cancelling between the AirPods Max and the Bose just sitting here in a room. You're gonna have to be in a louder environment, probably an aircraft. But when it comes to electronic music, drum and bass, probably even hip hop, bass on the Bose was a little lacking. Now, honestly, I used the Bose for an entire year now. Prior to listening to the AirPods Max, I didn't feel like it lacked any bass. If you have a pair of Bose headphones and you haven't tested the AirPods Max. Don't ditch your Bose head. They're a great set of headphones. They're still top of the line from Bose. They are phenomenal and absolutely worth the money that you spend on them. After listening to the AirPods Max, it depends on the genre of music. It depends on how you like your bass. It depends on how wide a stage of music you actually want to listen to. This is slightly better than the Bose when it comes to all of that. The instrument separation is phenomenal and the noise cancelling and the transparency is better. Noise cancellation by a bit, transparency by a mile. Honestly, when it comes to sound, I think the AirPods Max does win against the Bose 700. Do I think you need to ditch your Bose 700 headphones in order for you to actually go out and buy an AirPods Max instead? No, don't do it. Unless you're in the Apple ecosystem. So honestly, at this point, it's been very, very clear that the AirPods Max are slightly better than the Bose. Not by much, but they are definitely better. Are they worth $550? Well, it depends. Like I said, luxury listening, yes, they have the build quality. They have the sound quality. They do beat the best flagships in the market and they are pretty great. But a quick comparison between the Bose 700 and the AirPods Max, I would definitely say the Bose is also pretty well built so you're not going to lose out on build quality when you compare the two. The build quality on the Bose is fantastic. The build quality on the AirPods Max is just a bit better. So if you really want to pay for that extra premium feel, you go for the AirPods Max. The next thing that you guys have to know is this. The Bose has a fantastic carrying case. If you open it up, it has this fantastic magnetic flap for your cables to be put inside. Overall, I love this case. You want to give the consumers a case like this, not a case like this. I don't think this protects anyone or anything. Bose wins on that front. So, Finally, it's officially time to run down the con. Firstly, the case. I hate it. It's the worst case Apple could have ever made for any Apple device. The next con is irrespective of a premium build quality. These aren't waterproof. Furthermore, you have to be extra careful to make sure they don't get damaged, which is something you don't expect. If you're paying that price, you want it to be durable. You want it to last. I'm not complaining about the build quality. I actually love the way these look, but I know a lot of people out there are gonna look at this as a con and you needed to know, and that's exactly why it's a part of the list. I've already discussed the next con in the video, which is the lightning port and lack of USB-C. I think that's a pretty normal thing nowadays to have USB-C on all devices. I don't wanna rant about this because it's been spoken about in practically every video out there. Here's a subjective con. So these headphones aren't meant for music production because they're Bluetooth headphones, but there is a way where you can actually connect these to any particular computer, any particular door with a wire. Now the issue with that is that wire costs a bomb and and only Apple's proprietary wire works with it. It's great that Apple made something like that, taking those people into consideration, but to pay $550 plus to pay more for a wire, which is insanely expensive for just being a wire, is pretty insane. That would pretty much be my next con, the entire price value for this. Is it worth 60,000 rupees? Is it worth $550? It depends, that's subjective. Are you an Apple fan? It's worth it. If you're not an Apple fan, it's not. Other than that, I do still believe they are a fantastic pair of headphones. I think the sound is amazing. I think the noise canceling, is top of the line and I definitely think they've beaten Sony and Bose in their own game. Thanks for watching another episode of Essential Tech. If you actually learned something today about the AirPods Max and if you actually enjoyed this video, definitely hit that subscribe button. Leave me a comment in the comment section. Let me know what else you want to see about the AirPods Max in the near future and if there's anything else you want to know. Until next time, stay tuned. I'm going to catch you soon. Peace.